Hi everyone, it's Janet from Sugar Shine Designs. In this video, I'll show you how to make a pocket insert card using some cute panda images. Today I'm going to be using this Art Impressions Pantastic set. It's got these cute little pandas and I chose to color and cut out these three guys having a good old time. I've also used the panda that's just sprawled out and relaxing. I'd say he's chillaxing, but uh, anyway, these are super cute images. Um, I wanted to show you how I colored the pandas. It's really, really simple. It's really using just three colors of C. So I'm going to start with C5, which is going to represent the black of the panda, even though it's really just a dark gray. It's dark enough to give that representation of black without like completely obliterating any kind of um, artistic lines in the drawing. So with C5, I'm going to just color in his legs, his ears, and his eyes. And I'm going to leave the back paws where, where there's a line there to show the bottom of his paws. I'm going to leave that empty right now, but I'm going to come in with C7 and I'll fill in those bottom paws as well as just add some shadowing along the bottom of his body. And I referenced the actual packaging that gave me a really good idea of how to add some additional shadowing into that black to give it more dimension. The last thing I use is C0 and that's going to be used on the white of the panda. And again, I followed the packaging to just put in a bit of dimension so that the white in his fur isn't just uh, flat and undimensional. And I use the same exact process for the other three bears. The only difference is, is that I added R20 in for cheeks and for the bottom of the paws that you see there. So you can see it's really simple and easy to get these. It's actually very quick to color them, but I know it can be challenging uh, to just do black and white. So anyway, I thought it might help. Now, if you notice the eyes, I did go back and use some glazed jelly roll pen for the eyes. I just put in some dots and then I'm adding in a tiny dot with my uh, micron pen in black to put back a little bit of eyeball. So because when you use that, that C5 to color the eyes, it kind of wipes out any, any dimension in the eyes. So I just added those back and you just need to wait for that glaze pen to dry before you add the black back in. And that creates some super cute little eyes for you. There are no matching dies to this set, so I did fussy cut them out, but they're simple shapes, so not a big deal. Now I'm gonna start making the envelope or the pocket for this card. This is an eight and a half by 11 sheet of cardstock that I cut in half the long way. And then I'm going to put a score line in at five and a half inches on each of these pieces. And then I will go ahead and fold and score them. So this is again going to create that envelope looking pocket for the insert card I'm going to use. I chose a lighter green like this because I've got pattern paper that I'm going to use to decorate it. And the light color is going to show the borders a little better because the cardstock I'm going to be using with the patterns is quite dark. All right, now I'm going to trim this, each of these uh, half pieces from where the fold is at the top of the card down to the bottom corner. So this is the right piece and I'm working on the right side. I'm gonna just simply trim that off. Now the left piece is the same thing and I'm gonna cut it from the top of that fold to the bottom of the corner and when the, these two pieces are then glued together, you're going to get sort of a flattened pyramid shape. And this is what will create the pocket once the sides are folded in. It's a very simple construction. All right, so you can see now how this is going to go together. I'm gonna to get this out of here. And then I'm going to glue, as I mentioned before, the two pieces together to create the um, pocket. And as I'm gluing these in, I will fold the edges over just to make sure there's no binding. You don't want to put the two pieces so close together that the folds won't work uh, without binding each other. So you can see when they're closed, I'm getting that pocket look. 
Now I've taken two pieces of cardstock. They start out at five and a quarter by four inches, and then I'm going to cut them in half corner to corner. So the top corner, and I'll bring that into view just in a moment. Sorry about that. Here we go. <laughs> But you can see I'm matching up corner to corner. And this is where a cutter like this really comes in handy because you definitely know where that blade is going to go. And you can get nice crisp cuts in the corners. So then this is going to go on top of each side. So one of these is going, going to go on the left. And this darker green paper that you see sitting next to me is going to go on the right. And all it takes to mat this is just glue it on like I'm showing you. And I do find that just gluing the edges is adequate. You don't need to put glue all over a piece when you're adding it to a card or whatever. Um, I just point that out because I've learned that I don't need to use that much. <laughs> now you'll see I use a bone folder along the edges of this cardstock. It's because it's a dimensional cardstock. There is actually an imprint into it. And when I cut it, it kind of pushed the edges up where I cut it. So I find if that happens, using a bone folder to just press that edge down makes it all look nice and smooth again. So if you do notice that when you cut your cardstock, try that trick. It usually uh, will flatten the cardstock where the cut was made for me and you can't see anything unusual there on the edges like you did before that. So now this is ready to put together. Uh, all we need to do really is attach the bottoms to uh, the middle. So I'm just taking some ATG adhesive here, rolling it around the bottom or on the bottom actually, and then pressing it down. I just want to point out you want to make sure that when you do apply it that it's nice and even to the bottom. So just pay attention to that. And I'll do the very same thing on the other side and depending on the pattern paper you use you may want more of one type to show than the other. I really liked these leaf patterns, so I put that on the front. And now this creates the nice little pocket I need for the insert card. I cut a piece using a darker green, kind of a bamboo green colored cardstock with the largest stitched, uh, well it's called a rectangle double stitch die. And then I'm going to use the bamboo and this cute little uh, panda print to create a background on this piece. So I'm using Memento Black ink and I just staggered the two stamps together like this so I could create rows with it. And I'm just going to simply stamp, then re-ink and stamp again. And I'm going to go from top to bottom and then start again at the top. So I've speeded this up quite a bit just because it's a little bit boring. But I do think it's helpful to see how I staggered this out. and full disclosure I did do this with the same size piece of white cardstock just some junk cardstock really to make sure that my spacing was correct so that I didn't waste any good cardstock here with uh, moving my stamps around to fit better I will tell you that I didn't have to redo anything I just happened to have gotten it correct the first time around but I do have to add a few additional stamps in it. After I did the two stamps together, I'm going back with just the bamboo stamp. And I'm going to show that going off the edge at the bottom. And keep in mind, the bottom of this insert is going to be seen, and the top of the insert is not really going to be seen, or not very much of it anyway. So the top is not as important as the bottom is. And there I had to double stamp it. That's the advantage of using clear acrylic stamps and blocks. And now I'm going to just take my stamped image and apply it to the very top of the card. I used the brown cardstock behind there just to observe any excess glue so I didn't get all over my glass mat. And now I'm going to work on the decorative strip. This strip is 3 quarters inches wide and it's going to go on a 1 inch wide strip. And both strips are 5 and a half inches long. So I'm going to bring back the little paw print and put that back on my small acrylic block. And then I'm going to use more memento ink, but this time a dew drop. Just is easier with the little, little uh, stamp to use the little stamp pad. 
And I'm going to put one to the right of where I'm going to place this relaxing panda. And then I'm going to do a sentiment on the far left side on this strip. The sentiment is from the set, of course, and it says, Hope your day is pandastic. So cute. So this is just going to be simply stamped right onto that strip. And then I'm going to add two more paw prints to the right of that. And I chose to tilt them a little bit to the left and then the other one to the right. So it kind of looks almost like he's walking across there. Um, these paw prints are quite cute. I'm so glad they included them and that bamboo in the stamp set so you could do a little bit with the uh, backgrounds like I have here. So next I'll use some wet glue and attach the 3 quarters inch strip to the 1 inch wide strip. Again, both of these strips are 5 and a half inches wide, which is perfect for the pocket that I created. Now if you liked, you could, instead of creating a strip like this, you could make a belly band that goes around the entire uh, circumference of the pocket. But I just chose to do the decoration instead. I'm putting this cute panda on this strip. I just put a one square or rectangle of double-sided foam tape to give him a little more dimension. And I love how he looks. He just looks like he's really relaxing, kind of chillaxing, as I like to say. Before I finish all this up, I did notice that it would look better if I put a final paw up here in the top left-hand corner of my insert. So I went ahead and did that. And now I'm going to stamp the other sentiment that I'm going to put on the insert itself. It says, create a little pandemonium. So cute. Love the word play. And then I'm going to use a circle double stitched die from Art Impressions. It's the fourth die from the center. And I'm going to place this on top of that sentiment. Tack it down with a little piece of washi tape, and then I'll run it through my die cutter. So boom, there you go. <laughs> and now I'm going to apply the little sentiment just flat onto my insert. And I'm not going to put this in on foam tape or anything like that because it would make it harder to get it into the envelope or the pocket. But I did place it so that you wouldn't see that until you pull out the insert. Now I'm ready to add the decorative strip onto the pocket, so I'll just go ahead and do that. And I love how that looks the, with the colors and the different patterns. I think it's a great combo. Um, and I'm going to use my Sweet Petunia cut -a line ruler just to verify that I do have that straight. And press that in place and I can now insert my card in that pocket. I love the way this looks. It's pretty fun. Now on the back, I've cut another piece uh, using that same rectangle die. That was the largest of the stitched rectangle rec uh, dies. Just to put another backing here and that will make it nice and neat and also give it some strength. I love how this little card turned out. I hope you did too. If so, please leave me a comment, give me a thumbs up, and be sure to subscribe if you haven't already. Thank you again for spending some of your valuable time with me. I so appreciate it. Like a bird I'll be back on soon tree. with another video. Take care, everybody. Bye. I'm just sitting here.